I'm here to fucking tell you folks, you don't know what you're fucking losing if you want to get into all this victim mentality bullshit, right? The whole thing of being an outsider is you are already blessed with the opportunity of having a harder path. Oh no, not another box of dogs! It's another box of dogs! Yeah. I got a message today from my internet provider saying you haven't paid your bill. And I also got another message from them saying, are you okay? You haven't paid your electricity bill. So I was going to make the joke. If suddenly the lights go out and the internet cuts off, <laughs> that's what's happened. Did the letter actually say, are you okay? It said, are you okay? Yeah, it freaked me Here out. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Right? You can start a conversation straight away. The fucking, the, the cult of safety for your fucking chamber went into fucking tyranny. Yeah, so I'm not insane to think that that was weird, right? No, 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 no. Mate, a, an intrusion upon your fucking personal space, your personal physical or psychic well-being by an electricity company was not asked for, thank you very much. Yeah. It was weird. Like, like, like it's, it's, don't think it's some kind of union. I know what you're doing with your big communist ideas of uh, the collective and everyone gets together and you help everybody out. We're all going to be there. I know now you, I buy, I've got a, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fucking, I, this is my uh, video system for my, my big, this is, this is what I watch DVDs on. Oh, nice. This is how up tech I am. Yeah. That, I think that's a, Fucking good idea, though. Yeah, right. You know, I'm gonna. I'm looking for a discman as we speak. So, <laughs> all right. Yeah. So I bought that fucking thing. Hang on. You know, you're still there. Yep. Yep. Still here. I got you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. If it's... <laughs> so where are you? Where are you? You're in Australia. I'm, yeah, I'm in Mildura in Victoria. In right. Australia. Yeah. I, uh, my girlfriend and I left Melbourne during the lockdowns. It just it just got too weird. It was horrible. It, there was nothing happening. Everyone was trying to do comedy online, which sucks. And oh, it, I did it here. I was like, "Do you want to do this, Steve?" No, no, <laughs> exactly. Wait, I won't even fuck girls with condoms. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't like fake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 right. like, like, you have to wear a condom i'm not fucking you then yeah, like, yeah. Like, sorry to be crude right off the bat but basically oh, like, why? why 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 would i put a rubber thing over is uh, like what are you talking about like there's yeah, something between me the idea is to get close to the other person as close as <laughs> possible let's put something in between that it's a sexual speed hub <laughs> that's what i think about speed bumps so like for two thousand years you let these romans build roads and now you put things in the roads right. <laughs> right. It's let's not. just slow the cars down so you don't run it no it's not it's being fucking very much in control the whole health and safety thing has gotten so out of hand and it's a money grab it's all it, it, this is what drives me nuts that people can't see these things for what they are. That it's mate, didn't I do the health and safety material in fucking 2008? Yeah, you did. You did. Didn't I fucking tell them? Didn't I tell them in PC in 2008 about hate speech? And didn't I tell, didn't I name my first comedy DVD while it's still legal? Yeah. I fucking told you. I yeah. fucking told you the health and safety is what? It's a fucking small form of oppression from the state. So you can't do anything without permission, blah, 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 under the guise of safety and everything else that they're going to bring in. Yeah. It's all bullshit. Yeah, Why is every single person now have to have a high vis jacket? <laughs> People <laughs> wear them as like a fashion thing now. I, I like, it's, it's, that's not, it's like the mask. Mm. Figure that's the next big fashion thing. Yeah, well, the Asians have been on the ball for ages. I thought maybe, maybe the maybe the Asians walk around and go, "Hey, everyone's caught up to us," you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're very ahead of the curve in that regard. <laughs> oh my god! I know. I can imagine. You know, somehow I was in Australia for seven years, and then I get plucked out to come here to do a tour, and then this thing happened. I was in Melbourne, so I would have been in that place. I saw you at the at the Brunny 
um, it would have been 2019, I think. Um, and yeah, I had a ball. <laughs> and I love that you uh, talked about feminists in particular, because no one will touch that subject in like oh. Melbourne comedy unless they're like, yeah, I'm a feminist. And it's like, no, you're not. Oh, totally, mate. Mate, yeah. mate. I've watched them here too. It's the same here. It's fucking, you know, you don't think, you don't think England is propaganda, Tavistock, fucking nightmare, fucking central. It re really? Fuck. I was told I should go to England to like, that it's a much better place to do comedy. You can work a lot more and... Well, you can, you can totally, you know, it's not the same as when I was here in the 2000s where it was all on fire and we were having fun and there was fucking good comedians. Just now we've got to crank in these shit comedians that aren't that good to make up the numbers because apparently everyone's oppressed except white men and we've just had an easy ride. We've been kicking everybody else to the curb. It wasn't good, you know, you know, you can't come in. And I'm sitting there and I try and tell these people thousands of times about, you know, well, one, it's a big fucking story, isn't it, with their bullshit racism accusations and all this, but I'm sitting there going, you know, in a simple term, folks, if you, I know you hate capitalists as well, right? Mm. But I'll put it to you this way. Capitalists really have no time for racism. Yeah. They're interested in they're interested in cash. And and if they go, who can sell my fucking roller doors the best to that black knight? Well, get him in here. Because right? yeah. we don't have time for this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nothing. I've got, I've got, I was in the comedy scene here for 20 fucking years. I, don't fucking bullshit me. Don't try and tell me what it was, what it was, when it wasn't. If you were funny, they didn't care if you were black or a chick or a fucking had a Sikh turban on. They didn't give a fuck. Do you make the whole room laugh? Yeah, your phone starts ringing. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, right. That's yeah. What are you talking about? What are you going to pull heaps of hunters in here so I can sell beer to them? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Fuck it. If you're Get them on the fucking light, mate. If you're selling booze, that's right. Mean, you're fucking, you know, if you're going to make rip the room up, which means there's people are going to come and they're going to enjoy themselves and they're going to buy more booze if they're enjoying themselves, then, mate, they don't have time for going here with the, 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 the black girl. They don't give a fuck. They give a fuck. <laughs> Especially in the world of entertainment. I mean, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's in the open field. I mean, I mean, like, you haven't seen bands from the seventies with three black guys and two white guys. <laughs> Musicians don't give a fuck. You know? that's, what, that's what gets me. People from like <laughs> our era. I mean, I'm not sure how old you are, but I know. I mean, I'm like fifties, so I'm a seventies kid. We didn't really fuck with racism. It just never, it it wasn't a thing. Mate, mate. If you were a dick, we'd fucking kick well, you. Yeah, well, yeah, well, we all, we all know. We all know that this isn't a, you know. Hello, yeah. it's cutting out a bit. Oh, well, well, you know, there's an, agenda, there's an agenda going on. So, yeah. right, there's an agenda. There's a fucking psychological program that's been implemented through decades through this intelligentsia and academia and mm. the media. Yeah. And, you know. These are divide and conquer strategies, psychological warfare to create separate groups under the ideas of oppressed minorities so that they can then prosecute the majority. Really. Mm. Right, right. Because why? Because now you can make, you know, you make weird laws about subjective experiences. You know, it's my first thing why I did that stuff about PC so early. Why? Because you started, you're telling me that you were going to start putting law around people getting offended, not, not abused or, or, in you know not even insulted not, you know but you're, we already had laws for abuse and you know yeah you don't just walk up to people in the street and fucking swear on them in the face right? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. You, you can have an issue with that right? Yeah. <laughs> right. but you know when they started marrying and we've already got laws for that stuff you know you could call the cops and actually have some fucking something done like this guy just fucking freaked out on the bus mate, right but, but to say that someone was offended mm. What talking about it's a subjective it's just a subjective thing we've gone through this a million times in my fucking talks about this it's very simple i'm, I'm not some intelligentsia genius it's just it's just obvious mm. it's, it's a red flag straight away when you want to put an objective law around a subjective experience mm. what are you talking about <laughs> right, right. the fucked up thing about it now is the the people that are pushing back against it like they're really trying hard to shut people down 
I would have thought this nonsense could have been over a long time ago. I don't understand people going along with this shit. It, it's beyond. Well, me. I think that, of course, the whole, this whole uh, this whole observation of what's happening in front of us is is to people who are, uh, have any kind of rational thinking, common sense, or deep sort of spirituality. It's a bit of a no, oh, absolutely. We, but, but you know, it's like it's it's a weird observation of mass mind control. Even people that you didn't think you've known all your life. Who? Yeah, I mean, we could get deep into this. It could be massive discussion because I look into different. There's different angles and perspectives, and you will listen on the surface level. In the surface level of what's going on, simply from my observation, well, you know, if you've done any research, there's. Well, they, I think they go along with it way because because people get swayed by mass psychologies anyway. They prove the mainstream proved this to me all my life. They all go to the football. I used to sit there as a kid going, "Well, I don't like going. I don't want to go." But they all go. Right? Yeah. Do they all like it? What What don't I get? Yeah. But lots of them don't like it. But they go. That's what I started to realize. Not everybody's there that it, it wants to go. So that, that mainstream people start. It's like at the moment, everybody. I can see a positive thing about this Kate Bush song being popular off Stranger Things. At least something authentic and good shone through in a fake world of shitness, right? Yeah. But also when people, but, but also when people say to me that like people are discovering Kate Bush, no, they're not. These are mainstream people. These people will hear that song. Some of them will buy the album. Then they'll listen to side two and go, "What the fuck's going on here?" Right? Yeah. Then, right. then, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Right then. Then, then some of their friends will buy it just because their friends buy it. Yeah. Like, like I never wanted to be this cynical all my life about the mainstream. But ever since I've been doing fucking, uh, been on stage for so many years, especially in comedy, because in the underground, you're still in the underground. But when I'm into comedy, well, I'm, I'm, I'm more in touch with the mainstream than I was when I was in metal and stuff. So, and what I discovered is, yeah, there's, there's the mainstream mainstream. So because I used to come from the underground metal world, once I did comedy, I figured I was in the mainstream. But if you're a guy that's coming to, or a chick that's coming to see comedy with a bunch of guys, you don't know. You're just coming down to see comedy. Those people can be mainstream, but they're not mainstream, mainstream. Because mm. right? they don't know who they're going to come and see. They're going to go out. They're going to do it. There's mainstream, mainstream. That's when you get stratospherically big. They don't go to anyone they're not told to go to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, 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 this is why I always tell people like this. See, so you understand this. Unless you become real big, this big, off your own fucking merits, and you stay strong and true to yourself. But if you let the system make you this big, understand that all these fans you think you've got are not fans. They're mm. the window dressing to the marketing you've been through. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, see. I'm un see. I'm underground. I've actually got fans. I'm only cult famous, but I've got fans. I went to Australia, had a fucking dark night of the soul for seven years. Really didn't do any gigs. I'm not on the radio. I'm not keeping up my profile. Mm. So I come back here after eight years of being away. But I go to Ireland and I basically sell out the tour. Now I'm not selling out 500 seater rooms. I'm selling out 150, 200 seater rooms down to 50 rooms. Right. But after 10 years gap, I go there, people come. Why? Because I've got fans. I want to see that guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah right? Like, like, like that not... guy's back. All right, right. Whereas if, 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 you let the, if you let the machine make you, like Pink Floyd told you, welcome, my friends. Welcome to the machine. That and they told you, you know. We know what you dream. We told you all this. And now, what, see, what that does is now when you get marketed like this, the people who don't really like stuff gravitate towards you. So, so once, once, once that machine that put you there can take that away, those people vanish. Patrice O'Neill talked about that too. The yeah, yeah. Right. They, it's like, you they know, it's sort of give it to you so they can take you away. So, like 90% yeah. of the people who are into you aren't even really into you. They're not into you. Yeah, they're just going. Like, I was in Glastonbury about two weeks ago doing a couple of shows there, and then they had big acts on in the day, mm. but with other acts who aren't as big. 
So Josh Whitakin, for example, is on. He's on the TV a lot over here, this fella, and then he goes and he goes to the tent. There's a thousand people. And then as soon as he walks off stage, 750 of them walk out. Wow. And so then the next act, who no one knows, because then all the telly comes on, and then there's like 100 people left, 150, 250 people left. Yeah. Why? Because that 700 just went to see that. Right? Nothing else could be good. Because, he's yeah, he's on the TV, so... Yeah, yeah, right. So that's the thing. They don't have any kind of, oh, you know, we'll go and see something. Else. Maybe something else could be good. No, they just, well, I'll go and see that one. That's the one I see. He's the one from the TV. And then they see it. Now we've seen it. Now we leave. The little serotonin program blip is already in there from seeing. So I've experienced that myself as well. When I see someone that I know from seeing film clips and whatnot, there's a little rush. They've really tapped into this the psychologists and the they've really made this an art form like i kind of the the mass formation the psychosis the the absolute mind control of doing that if you see someone on the telly enough you will want to see it doesn't really matter what they're saying you'll just accept bands coming out and saying i'm on team pfizer i'm on team (laughs) That was hilarious to me. I was pissing myself laughing. Like they were going to the crowd. Which one did you get? And they're like cheering for Pfizer. I thought they were the bad guys. It's, you know, it's, thought- it's, this, is, this is a remarkable observation of the, uh, of, of, of a completely it hasn't even gone as mad as it could go. It's, 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 an ins- it's insane. Mm. And while everybody's gritting their teeth under the force of persecution, be it through PC or the loss of their jobs or all that, right, right, insanity is just spewed out. Yeah. And everybody in the force of not being one of the prosecutes, which is, which is not new because if you read any book by guys who want to write about being in communist Poland or communist Russia or that, they tell you what, there's just lies and lies and lies and insanity, but no one says anything until everybody is kind of insane. Mm. Yeah, yeah. None of those, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. none of those books are like, I had a nice time, you know? It was, <laughs> it was like a holiday on the beach. We, we all had fun. We had seasons. Oh, and they fun. shared everything, and everyone got a, everyone got human rights. And, uh, mate, see, I, we could talk for hours, you know, because this is this is a massive fucking topic. It is it's like huge. goes into. I mean, here's here's what I like at the moment. Like, people people's own compassion. And, and the good parts of being human, it's, it's just being inverted and used against them, right? Yeah. So, so in the sense, so in the sense of, see all these PC cancel culture people, this is how I view them, right? They've been, they've been programmed over decades, as we all know, if you've done any kind of research on it, right? Through, through the institutions and through the media and through what? You're sort of an infiltration of what they were, it's a we call it cultural Marxism from Frankfurt School stuff, critical race theory, all this it comes through this right. So it's come through this hardcore, we'll call we'll use these terms left wing and all this, right? Just so we know where we are. So they so you know it's come through academia. We've seen it because I'm 50 fucking five too, and I've watched it. We didn't get this shit at school. And yet, if you look at it back now, you see the shit we got, it was slowly coming in. I remember Battle of the Sexes badges for TV shows from number 96 and all this. There it was, it was fucking beginning. I remember in the 90s when people started to call their boyfriends partners and their girlfriends partners. And I used to go, What are you fucking doing? Right. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize then that see what they're doing, they're desexualizing the demarcation. Making us all you right, 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 right. Here, here's the beginning of all this fucking bullshit they're going on with about now, right? I mm. never succumb to this. I never called my girlfriend a partner ever once. It was a, it was offensive to me when I heard it. No, Steve, you don't get offended, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, the, yeah. the non-offensive guy I was like, what? No, there's no sexuality in it. No, no, the femininity in it. Yeah, you don't exactly like, like, like on fuck the shit out of your partner. No, I'm, me, my mate, me, my mate used to do jokes about that. Yeah. Do you <laughs> mind if I 
lick your vagina, my partner. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's just pathetic, you know, it's just, you know. Like a, you, like you, a penthouse you know, forum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, he's my partner. Partner in what? In fucking crime? In, oh, in life, Steve. We take our journeys together. I know you're making that the new age creeps into it with all your fucking bullshit, right? Mm. So, so, so they've done all this stuff. It's slowly been coming about. And then, what, so now when you program these kids, it's the kids, you know, when, when there's people my age that are falling for it, these kids, I give a bit of grace because they copped it half. Right? Oh, yeah. Right. So, you know, and that, that and kids, there's a whole war on children. You know, it's fucking unbelievable. And so, the thing is now, like like when those Greeks or whoever it was snuck those fucking soldiers into that city with the Trojan horse. Trojan, yeah. Right, I think, hey, we've got a gift. But at night, they all scurry out and mask you. Well, this is what they've done. Hey, we've given you what? A psychological Trojan horse of what? Oneness. No suffering. Mm. Uh, individuality coupled with diversity and 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 you know rah 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 all the outsiders getting a getting a getting a chance yeah and the evolutionary of the global citizen we're all one it's dumb tricking you tr tricking you with metaphysical truths mm. right because in transpersonal consciousness you could say to one yeah you're one but you're not operating here in transpersonal consciousness you're in personal consciousness yeah right 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 but they want to tell you it's just a subjective postmodernist whatever's in your own head is just what's going on so so here's that ties into the pc stuff of what a subjective law objective law around a subjective thing everything's subjective mm. Right, right, right. So, so, and, be, and because everything's subjective and everything is regarded as oppressive that comes from tradition or structure, because there's no structure in the subjective, is there? Right? So, so, so they view everything, that's why they call themselves progressive, right? And therefore, they need to change everything and destroy it. Yeah. Right? So, so, so they wanted to, because they're not going to create, they need to destroy because they believe they're oppressed. So, they need to destroy the oppressor. Where their end game is or what happens after that, they don't seem to have laid that plan out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, who's going to fill that vacuum? <laughs> right? So then, so then, in that psycho psychological stance, these are my theories. Mm. They then start to hold nothing sacred. Yeah. Right, right. So, so, so now there's no anything. sacredness. You can right, do anything. Right, because, yeah. yeah. Right, and it all must be respected. Yeah. There's the other psychological thing that's coming into you. It all must be respected. It can't be. Uh, you can't go against it. You can't uh, discriminate. See, people don't understand this whole thing. They think that discrimination is a wonderful thing. So your own compassion is being used against you. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it's wonderful that people don't get discriminated against on unfair terms. Who wants to see people suffer unfairly? Mm. <clears throat> like most not sane people don't want, would, uh, don't want to see that. You don't want to see people kicking dogs or kids or anything. Like you. Right? Only psychopaths and doing things like this. Mm. So they now offer you this on this global ascent. The poor oppressed minorities, the, the immigrants, the gays, the women who are not a majority, but are oppressed. And because they're the weaker sex, even though we tell you they're not the weaker sex, they're just as equal, but, it, but, but in the psychology that you already know they're the physically weaker sex, so you feel bad for them anyway, don't you? See, even unconsciously. <laughs> yeah, 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 right, so. Stepping into our so, biological functions. Of course, of course, right? Because it's a cultic psychological warfare. Mm. So, so now all these all these groups have, have been have been propaganda to that they're that they're victims. They're victims of this of this oppressor. And what is this oppressor? It's white men, it's the capitalism, it's the it's the it's the it's the, the church, which is true. Mm. And and there's a truth to these things. That's the that's the thing. Right, right, right. Like here's the thing. Right. This is not all just a fantasy. Mm. 
but they don't realize that 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 the rebellion that they've been programmed with to go against these things has been programmed them by these things. And they go, but why would these things put a program in them to have them destroyed? Because this is globalism, folks. Yeah. Right? So you have to understand that capitalism, oh, you're going, right, 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 right. Now, capitalism will be destroyed or rerouted or redesigned into a different thing. So they don't care if you pull this system down. Right? You think, you, you think you're, you're, you're going to get a, if you start to get a win that maybe certain positions in, in your government start to get called out for what's gone on in the past few years or so forth, and you might see some, you, you feel like you're getting some justice, watch out because your governments are already gone. And globalists want your governments gone. See, they're already in the fucking, they're already in the crosshairs, folks, right? They're just fucking, they're just husks of things now. Puppets voicing the fucking plan of a fucking agenda. So don't think that they are the bloody government, the the government's already gone. Right? It's like when they had that plebiscite thing in Australia about gay marriage, we'll give you, we'll give them a vote. I already knew it was a yes win. Why? Because it's a global agenda. The plebiscite is an illusionary thing to give you the uh, the illusion of power, especially lefties who now think, yeah, we got it up against the homophobes. It was all bullshit. It was already a fucking win, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I refuse right. to participate in that farce. I oh, you're com- complete. Yeah, I don't participate in any of their circuses, right? Yeah. I don't participate in their fucking. I have a fucking go and get a mortgage. It's all a circus. Mm. It's all a circus. Someone said to me the other day, my mate in Australia. I mean, I'm living in a box room in a house about to move to Manchester with my ex girlfriend. My stuff's in Australia in storage. Half my stuff's in storage here. I live on 55. I live like a fucking uh, student. Right. I should feel ashamed of myself. I don't. No. Right. So my friend said to me the other day, Steve, wouldn't you fucking like to have your own house? Wouldn't I? To see my, or, I've got a whole record, CD, DVD, collection, book collection I've collected in Europe over 10 years of tracking around. I've never seen put up. Mm. <laughs> right. It's been in boxes. If I go through it, it's going to be, I didn't even know I had this. Fuck, I forgot. Right. right. Yeah. So, so, yes, of course. He goes, wouldn't that give you peace of mind? I thought, here's the fucking clincher. Why do you think me getting in debt to a bunch of demonic globalist banking system fucking lunatics who want to give me some money, but not give me any money, give me no money, just transfer some numbers to me, then say you owe us the numbers we transferred to you, plus twice as many of the numbers again so you can live in a house and have peace of mind which as soon as you're in that house everybody else turns up the council the government the insurance companies now everybody else is there hello could we get this for this could we have that for that could we get this this could we get that for that insurance you better get insurance you have to get insurance yeah i've got so much peace of mind now Mm. Like, like what are you talking about i'm not getting involved in that fucking system to think maybe i can get in there and get out no it's already designed to fuck you in the ass right once, once you own it you don't own it the government you don't could, own it. They, they did this with the truckers in canada they just stepped in they gave them massive fines if they don't pay those fines they'll step, they'll take their houses you don't own it not with this kind of government no uh, we don't own it if you once you register it mm. That's why you don't even own your kids because you registered them. See, what, is, what does register mean? Well, you register it, so you loan it from the state. So what are, even if you break down the word regis, which comes from what? Regis, which is what? King. King. Fuck. You sign it over to the king. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Right. right, because you registered it. So you're, it's on loan to you. So a social worker is basically a bailiff for human beings because the system can come back and get its product back. Why? Because you registered your kid with a birth certificate, didn't it? Well, now it's a product. Yeah. So here's another part of this whole fucking thing. You know, their birth certificate, and I'm not an expert on it, but the basic thing is here's where the the sovereign citizen people turn up. Mm. So do you know that the basics of that? Do you know it? I know it. Basically, very basically. Well, it's the same here. I'm not an expert in the in sort of, I know some experts are great, but mm. that's one of those. Well, it's basically, things. it's basically like this. It's 
all got to do with money. So you registered. Once you registered, part of you is now on the stock exchange. If everybody, because they are registered, they're owed money from the system, actually. Right? You're all worth a bunch of cash, which is owed to you. Then they give you a name, which your parents might call you fucking Steve Hughes, but then they give you a title, Mr. or Mrs. Miss, Sir, Doctor, whatever. These titles can create a false person. In fact, what is a person? A person comes from the Greek word persona, which is what? The mask. Right, right, right. So a person is a persona, right? So because you're now capital, that's why when you've registered and you get your license, your surnames in capital letters. Right? So if you get a bill, you'll see your surname or your whole name is in capital letters. Whoever writes in capital letters like this? Yeah, I've never done that. I always wonder. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. So why do we, when you get a bill, does it then say your name in lowercase and then your surname in capital letters or in your license, all in capital letters? Or It's, it's the registry. Because, because it is my, my crude understanding of this world. It goes back to what? Well, it's capital, isn't it? Mm. Right. So it's got to do with where, where's Washington Capitol Hill? What, what's a ship do? It's got a captain, capital. Right? What's a ship do? It brings merchandise. Right? It's all money. Right? So now there's kind of legalese stuff. So now if you go, if a cop comes up to you, for example, or a judge or something, goes, are you Mr. Stephen Hughes? And I go, yes. I've just entered a contract as the person because I admitted that I was the thing they write as me yeah right so 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 once i've admitted to that because i now acquiesced even though i don't know there's a contract if you don't know this i'm now in a contract so when a cop comes up to you that's why lawyers will tell you the ones that say don't talk to them why because as soon as you they ask you your name and you go yes you're in a contract not as you but as the person mm. right <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah right 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 so then they'll see, they'll, they'll talk to you how words are associated with this. This guy I listened to years ago saying this, he goes, so, so then it's all under maritime admiralty law, which is the law of commerce, right? Because you've got common law and law of the land, but then there's the law of commerce, which is the law of the sea, right? So if you see like those American flags and they've got a gold rim around them, that means they're not working for America. They're working for British admiralty maritime law. They're working for so if you go into a court, see, once you go into a court in a country, you've left the country. Ah, <laughs> yeah, ah. yeah, right. Because where do you go? You go into the dock. <laughs> Shit. Right. You're docked. You're right. dry docked. And so what happens when a ship, that's why all ships are named after women, because they give birth to manifest goods. And what does a ship do? It births. What do you do? You birth. What happens when you're born? Your mother's water breaks and you come down the canal. Right? And what do you come out to? The doctor. <laughs> what? Right? And the first right? thing they do is slap you. The first thing they do is hold your feet off the ground so you don't touch the land. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> right. It's ritualistic. Yeah. I don't know if they do that anymore, but you know, we've all seen it in fucking right. Yeah. Because then what happens? Well, you know, then you've got to sign the registration. What's that do? Gives you citizenship. Now you're on the ship, now you get the doctor. And what happens? You've got to put your money in the banks to get currency for the water flow, for the money flow. If you don't pay, you'll go under. And then when you go to the court to give us more about money back, you have to stand in the dock. Mm, in the river banks. Right. And the river banks, you've got to put your money in the banks next to the river banks for the currency, get the, your citizenship and get the captain, get the captain to fucking sign your certificate to get your manifest birth. So. It goes so deep. No, it goes to, you can look at words and spells. Look at, they talk about what do you do when you get up? You get up in the morning. What's that? It's got to do with death. Morning. Then you wake up. What do you do at funerals? You go to wakes. 
what do you do then? Then you've got to go and do your work. What's that? Your undertakings. Then you do what? You get your weak. What happens during the five days? You get weak, and then by the end, you're weakened. Oh, <laughs> Are you? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're blowing my mind, literally. I, I've, I've been to, like, all of this stuff. I used to go through this. I used to study this stuff a lot. Uh, there's other people who have talked about this stuff and it always go. It, when you see it, it just, it makes you go, oh shit. Yeah. That's what's going on. The, I came across this quite by chance earlier. It's a Bruce Lee thing. He said, don't speak negatively about yourself. Even as a joke, your body doesn't know the difference. Words are energy and cast spells. That's why it's called spelling. Yeah. The way you speak about yourself and you can change your life. What you're not changing, you're also choosing. Yeah. Yeah, this stuff. Spelling. It really is. It spells tell a vision. Tell a vision. Yeah. And what do they do? They broadcast. Broad, yeah. What do you do with spells? You cast spells. Yeah. <laughs> right, like Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah, that's, that was, that's the old one. Yeah, the yeah, wood. The old, yeah. But, it's, but anyway, getting back to what we're talking about, mm. it seems, see, what we seem to be, he's, he's, he, these are my opinions. People can take them as they want. But with all these PC cancel culture people now and feminists and LGBT and everything that's got going on. See, now you've, you've got these victimized, erroneously reacted groups. Mm. They, they react erroneously and given all power by the media. And so in one sense, they're the ideologies divide and conquer given to you by the enemy. Mm. So like when they snuck their soldiers into that Troy, they've done this psychologically. So now you, some of your own citizens are now like Agent Smiths. Mm. Right? So I call them psychological foot soldiers. So, so now, what do you do? Well, you've infiltrated the walls, the city. Yeah. You haven't done it by a marauding army. You've done it with psychology through the citizens already behind the walls. Right? So, 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 so now you so now you've, you could be, because why? Because, because everything must be, and this ties into the, the what, flatten the curve, because all these, all these ideologies are about making everything the same. I mean, why do they think they started giving people trophies for participating? <laughs> <laughs> that still cracks me up. Yeah, right. But we'll see, this is what it is. This is what it is. It's to, it's to, it's to demoralize any sense of individual exceptionalism. Mm. Yeah. Because any kind of individual, it, 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 yeah, do not stand out. Why? Because this is making the weaker or the, or the, or the less accomplished feel bad. Mm. Now, we haven't even asked them if it is. Yeah. But we've just told you that it is. And, of course, if we propagate that enough to the ones that do feel bad, we can generate in them pathological victim mentalities. Mm. Right? So, because I noticed this ages ago. I do it on stage. You know, when I grew up, they had punks with mohawks. They didn't walk around dressed like this and then got upset when they got discriminated against. There's metal heads or this, you walked around, what you knew you'd get discriminated. This is the point to get no. discriminated. Yeah. yeah. Like you don't want to get bashed, right? But who wants to get bashed? But what, but what you want to do is you want to stand out wide so that, so that you are unemployable mm. from the system. Like, like is, is this giving you enough message? Yeah. It was, it, was, it was a joke we used to say, because I used to run with the punks back in the day. It was a joke. You'd come out and they'd go, you wouldn't fucking employ me. I mean, fucking, you know, like going into a place where everyone's in suits and you go in with the leather jacket and the hawk and the whole bit. And you're like, you fucking, yeah, it was a joke. See? It was like, like, you didn't want to get the job. Yeah, you know? yeah. The whole thing was also, it was, a, it was, a, it was an aesthetic rebellion against the normality, the system, the being involved in the structural system of the what, nine to five, get the job, go the blah, 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 right? Mm. But what they've done, 
that the globalist corporate globalist agenda thing is just it's 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 brought in all the outliers gays immigrants i even see a punk going oh, it's very discriminatory that i can't get the job i saw someone the guy even got them there, right so 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 they bring them all in right see, see here's what's so amazing about it is it, is it they're always going, we want the destruction of the system and the capitalism that's inherently racist and inherently sexist and violent and fucking colonialism and white men and patriarchal, right? So they're always going against it, right? Screaming to, for it to be destroyed. But at the same time, all their agendas are about begging for acceptance. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so, so they're they begging for acceptance and... It's an amazing trick that they fucking played on them. Right? Mm. So, so because they're just they're, they're just they're just corporate re rebellion. It's just it's just franchised rebellion, right? Reversed, so that the whole system got you. Because also, what is this is why I didn't want to go in the mainstream. Why? What did it offer me? It took all my time for not much money. Then it wanted me to pay insurance, get into debt, do this, fucking die at sixty-five. This is what it's offering you. What's attempted you in here? But don't you want that? Don't you want to yeah. get into so much debt that you have to comply? Isn't that the like, business? Like, we will force you to comply by giving you right, something it's, that it's, we can take away. It's unfucking believable how they've been fucking, you know, as I said, I, if the young kids have fallen for it, I give them some grace, the poor bastards, mm. right? They're under fucking attack, these young kids, right? Yeah. But when I've met men my age and stuff, I'm, oh no, Steve, that's probably a good thing. But oh Jesus, <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, baby, yeah. come on, you know what's going on? Plus, I'll tell you this, you, you, you know, I fucking started a hit death metal band in Australia in 1984. What are my chances of success? zilch mm. success in the sense of we're going to go on the tour and go on the this and right yes. zilch mm. i mean the blue mountains 100 kilometers outside sydney with me three mates <laughs> listening to fucking records in the bush putting together a band with a massive dream in my fucking head yeah and i fucking did that and then that band broke up and i fucking put tape trade and stuff all around the fucking thing and then by and then i got to join mortal sin so then by and then so in less than 10 years of even getting a drum kit from the fucking blue mountains i was playing at the hammersmith Odeon with testament you were in mortal sin yeah right yeah. didn't do a, right so now i'm not here to blow me on trump I'm here to fucking tell you folks, you don't know what you're fucking losing if you want to get into all this victim mentality bullshit, right? The whole thing of being an outsider is you are already blessed with the opportunity of having a harder path. Mm. Right? The harder path will gain, will give you greater reward. Yeah. They're taking away, they're taking away your harder path. This is why PC and everything's about what? No suffering. No one should suffer, which is also tied in, if you don't think about it enough, to what what is this, what is the pharmaceutical company about? No pain. Mm. No suffering. But any mysticism of that will tell you at this point of evolution, at least, you need to probably immerse yourself in pain to wake up. Right? Pain gives you what? Why why you all want to dismiss pain? I don't know why I stand why. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. It's fucking horrible. Right? You don't want to be in physical pain all the time. That's not a harmonious life. But I'm talking about just what? Any comfort zone? Pain. How did I get from fucking the Blue Mountains? There wasn't even a thrash metal scene. I started the fucking thrash metal scene. Yeah. Now, not by myself. Like, I mean, had me mates and we did there. And we did gigs in halls and guys' backyards. And then we did a fucking gig at the fucking padding. And then the guy at Utopia said, you want to do a gig? So our first gig's in front of a thousand people. So we went from one mate's backyard to the Paul in fucking Blacktown with our mates when us hired to then their first gig in public to a thousand people. Yeah. Now I understand we I was at a good time in fucking metal zeitgeisty fucking time. Mm. But still it went from there. See, this is the underground. This is fucking the underground. You do it yourself. The blessing was to do it yourself. Right, right. right? That was fucking cool. 
and and now you're under no power. You don't, you know, you can express yourself. This is why I've never had a problem doing the comedy I do. And people go, you know, you know, because I just came from metal world where you just did what you wanted to do, didn't you? Yeah. Do you want to call your album Satanic Sluts and put fucking three chicks on fucking crosses on the cover with? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's not going to sell very well. We don't care. <laughs> it's going to sell to guys that want to hear records called Satanic Sluts. You know, like, so, so, so it's people who've never understood the underground. They don't get that. They don't get that when that big system makes you. It can just fucking destroy you. They don't get what it's like. So all these PC people, you don't understand me. You go, well, you know, women don't get a chance in comedy. Yes, they do. I was here for 20 years. If you're funny, they, they let you on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell me that they didn't, because I know they did, because there was chicks there. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? There was black fellas there, black chicks there. There was gay guys there. There was posh guys there. There was guys from council estates there. There was Scottish blokes there. There was red-haired guys there. There was fucking Asian blokes there. What are you, what are you talking about? It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, and I'm if they were funny, they got work. Yeah. I've always thought it was bizarre when I'd see someone doing like a comedy special in front of thousands of people and talking about their, how they don't have a voice. <laughs> like, what are you fucking talking about? <laughs> You're talking to like literally millions of people right now. That's you what I mean. We're living in, in, in upside down bizarro world. Yeah. Where people are, uh, people can't even uh, see their own realities. Mm. It's, it's quite a profound thing to fucking observe. It is. I mean, I've said, I've said the same thing, like what you just said then. I'm watching some woman on, on the BBC who's on 350,000 pounds a year, probably telling everybody how she's oppressed. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be oppressed. <laughs> and do you know what else is funny? Of my 50 fucking five years on the planet and all the girls I've had, I've gone out with and the girls who are just my mates and girls I've known in comedy and girls. And I can't remember one of them ever coming up against Steve. I'm feeling oppressed. <laughs> oh, God. Now I want to make a pill like a Panadol. Feeling oppressed. Like, 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 like none of these chicks, I, I, none of these women have ever said this to me. Oh. Have they been hiding it from me? Because Believe me. If they're going to tell anyone, they tell me because they know they can talk to me. They don't fuck me enough. They talk to me, right? Yeah. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Right? So, 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 don't tell me they wouldn't tell me. If they're going to tell anyone, they, I think I should tell Steve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? He's well read. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he knows I won't suck his dick. Right? <laughs> so, but I can't remember one of them coming up to me those times we went to gigs and one another had barbecues or drinking beer in the back of cars. All these chicks going, Steve, I'm having a rough time with the oppression. You know? <laughs> 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 that just and also this bullshit. It's just, I'll tell you what else. It's, 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 see, if I want to get brutal about this, I'll tell you this little interjection as we go on. If I wanted to get brutal about this, you know, people, don't you agree with these, you know, idea, ideology, Steve? It's not that I don't agree with you. It's that, see, you're implementing the ideology of divide and conquer of the enemy against your own people. So in one sense, you're conducting the crimes of the enemy. You're now complicit in the crimes of the enemy. So it's not so much that I don't agree with you. It's that I think you should be charged with domestic terrorism and treason. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 right because because you're now against your own citizens yeah you are, and you don't even understand how deep the occultic magic goes do you folks because if you throw some little fucking accusation out there in this environment this kind of fucking psychological environment with the media and the groups everywhere and decide to accuse someone of something because you had an erroneous reaction and then what if that person, say it's a guy, what if his wife leaves? What if his job then sacks him? Because the reputation goes around, you're not allowed to have this going in the workspace. Oh, yeah, yeah. His wife might lose him because of that. Then he might lose his kids. Then he might have issues of unresolved trauma which send him into a depression, which he might start drinking. The guy might kill himself. And guess what? Now that is on your karma. Mm. 
yeah, I've seen what happens to these people. The people that do this to people, it does not end well for them. It does not. Because guess what? You don't, you don't understand how much you're being tricked, folks. Right. See, what you're doing is you're doing the you're doing the work of the enemy and you're also taking on the karma. Now, the enemy has absconded himself of karma. Yep. <laughs> you better start fucking waking up. If you think all this discrimination in them, in that you don't understand it, taking the power away from every decision you're allowed to make with your own. So if we decide to dump a bunch of 300 black Muslims in a small town in Ireland and the local residents go, we don't think this is a good idea. You just now there's discrimination. Mm. Right. But that takes away the power of why can't these people say, no, that wouldn't be good. And it probably wouldn't be a very good idea. Mm. Yeah, well, are you against Muslim? Fight. Are you against Muslims that come from the North Cape of Africa? If you were three hundred African fellows who grew up as Muslims in the North Cape of Africa, they have a different filter of life. Mm. Yeah, but I'm not saying they're bad people or anything, right? But 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 their reality is is vastly different. Well, we're all the same, though. We're all the one in a transpersonal, big metaphysical level, which you're not even thinking about, you little program fucking bot, right? You can't just stick 300 fucking black fucking Muslim fellas from the north tip of Africa next to a bunch of old ladies who live in a village near Cork. I'm sure one or two of them might get on and have a wonderful time. Who fucking knows? But don't think it's all just going to pan out fucking fantastic. And don't think that these people who already live there have a right to say whether or not they think this would be a good idea for the ongoing well-being of their fucking town and their lives. But once you bring in the idea of discrimination, you take that power away and give it back to the state. Now they can prosecute because you have a, an opinion on how you think you would like your fucking town to be run. Mm. Right? Because everything's the same, isn't it? Okay, then why can't the Satanists come down to the school and go, we're going to teach the toddlers about demonology and raising fucking demons. And you go, we don't think it's a good idea for the kids. And they just go, that's discrimination. Yep. It's not illegal to be a Satanist, is it? No. Well, why can't we come and teach the kids? The Christians are allowed to come and teach the kids. Why can't we come and teach the kids? And then again, we don't think it's a good idea. It's not a good idea to have the Christians teaching the kids or sex education or the state teaching the kids about any of this shit. Mm. Why aren't you teaching your own kids about sex? What is the state doing? They're telling you fucking, and now they're just basically peddling them pornography and fucking corrupting their fucking minds with absolute perversity. I don't know how any teacher can stand in straight working in the system with any dignity whatsoever. So, in fact, if you want me to go hard, I thought, isn't it interesting? Hey, every day school teachers are fucking psychologically corrupting children and peddling them pornography. Doctors are fucking vaccinating them, filling them with antipsychotics and antidepressants. Politicians, celebrities, and that are fucking them. And then most people in the world seem more concerned about whether or not we can kill them before they're born. <laughs> You see where you're a bit mixed up, folks? Good luck, kids, because oh. no one's on your fucking side. Yeah. I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of very, very, very pissed off people in the future when they... Mate, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what else they're going to get pissed off about. Why? They think they can go against nature. Yeah. It's, that's the most... That's insanity. <laughs> we can outdo nature. <laughs> this is what happens when you start to become a scientific dictatorship. Yeah. Well, right now, my my uh, girlfriend's in the other room with COVID. She's quadruple vaxxed. I'm untouched. Nothing. You know, because I've only been using nature. It's, Mate, it's an absurdity. It's a fucking absurdity. nature man I mean, wait what do you think you're gonna fucking do you think you're gonna trick yeah. all these doctors and scientists guess what you didn't make the body doctors and scientists mm. you don't even you don't even observe reality without the aid of a tool you, you know what i mean straight away you think you're so clever with your fucking tools i'd rather listen to a shaman mm. I can tell you what's going on. How? Why do you have to go to that world? 
It's like the other day, listen to this. You think these this advanced medical science, really? Have you ever noticed that you always hear all the time? Well, doctors are looking for a cure for this and a cure for that. They're looking for the cure for this. It's funny, I never hear any of them looking for the cause of this. Yeah. And yeah. yet in one sense, see, if you, had, if, you, if you had a pipe burst in your house and water flooded through the kitchen and then through the lounge, <clears throat> the plumber wouldn't be granted that, that kind of a disposition. He'd have to, well, because otherwise, imagine if he didn't find out where it was coming from. He just yeah. gave you a mop which is what medication and said here, we won't find out where it's coming from. Just use this mop for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> Dig a trench through your kitchen. That'll cure you. Yeah. Like, see folks, what are they doing? Looking for cures. <laughs> there is so you just leave the whole of the, you just leave the whole of the pipe just open there. Yeah, just, just keep taking these pills and sweep at this thing. You just go up to it every now and then and go, I, I wonder if that is a <laughs> No, it's it's fine. It's fine. The house was built like that. <laughs> <laughs> house with running water. Oh, man. It's a crazy time. 